All right. So, uh, continuing on through lesson four two, uh, through the chapter four, I should say. Uh, before two here is we're going to start getting into two different ways SSS, which is side 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 and side angle side SAS, which are ways that'll be we need to know less information in order to prove the triangle is congruent. So. Before we do that, we have our two triangles that are congruent here, triangle TJD and triangle RCF. We're going to list out what's congruent. So starting with the size, remember, order matters with this. The first one ties with the first one, second with the second, third with the third. So we're going to do side TJ congruent to side then RC. So then JD congruent to CF and then TD congruent to RF <coughs> angle same idea so the first one first one would be angle T congruent to angle R angle J congruent to angle C and then angle D congruent to angle F. So, knowing the triangles are congruent, we're going to have three pairs of sides that are congruent. We're going to have three pairs of angles that are congruent. We have our three sides, three sets of angles. We're good. So, like I said there, so by definition, we know if two triangles are congruent, we have three pairs of corresponding sides, three pairs of corresponding angles. If all that's true, then we know the two triangles are congruent. However, to show two triangles are congruent, we don't always need to show all six pairs. We can show it doing less, starting with our postulate for one, which is the side, side, side postulate. Now, when you get to using this in a proof, all you will have to put is SSS. That'll represent side, side, side. So what it says is if we know that we have all three sets of sides congruent, the triangles have to be congruent. So, prove the following triangles are congruent given that AB is congruent to BC, AD is congruent to CD, and we're going to prove ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. So, we would have <coughs> this four triangles. So, triangle A, B, D, and CBD. So, this is the triangle we're working with. I'm sorry there's not a figure here, but we're going to draw this in. This is what it should look like. So, they're sharing side BD on both, which is going to be nice for what we're doing. So, AB, we're going to mark this, is going to be congruent to BC. So, we're given that. We're also given that AD is congruent to CD. So, right now, we're given... Two sides congruent. So obviously with just doing side side side, that's what we're working towards. But if you have two sets of sides congruent, look and see if you can find that third set of sides congruent. Then we can prove the triangle is congruent and it's going to be really nice. So that's going to be our next step here is we're going to try to find that last side. Now with BD being shared, again, they're the same side. So we can say BD is congruent to BD. When it's congruent to itself, it's reflexive. All right. So make that mark. So get in the habit of as you see things congruent, mark them or at least make sure they're marked. And then as you say, going through the proof, make sure you get the marks put in as well. Because now we can go, wait, we have one, two, three sets of sides. So we can say our proof of triangle A. B, D is congruent to triangle C, B, D by side, side, side. <coughs> Next we have postulate 4-2, which is the side angle side postulate. Now, where this comes into play is we're going to have two sets of sides 
but it's the angle in between the two sides that has to be congruent. You're going to find if it's not in between those two, it doesn't always work. It has to be in between these two in order for this to work. And that's our side angle side. So think there's a side, the angle in between, and then the other side. So if we are given that RS and TK are congruent, what else we need to, need to know so that we can say that these two triangles are congruent by side angle side. So we have this top and this bottom that are congruent. So we have a set of sides. We need another set of angles, or a set of angles, and we're going to need another set of sides. So let's look first. Is there an easy set of sides? Well, yeah, there is. Right here in the middle. SK would be congruent to SK by reflexive. So we really have two sets of sides here. So now we just need the angle in between. The angle we're talking about is this angle and this angle. So we would need angle RSK to be congruent with KSR. Wait, no. RSK, so with TKS, sorry. Angle TKS. So we need this angle, we need this angle. So we're going to say needed. So we can look and tell this is true. So the only thing we really need is to know that these two angles are congruent, then we can use side angle side. So could we prove these two are congruent? Well, if we look, we have one set of sides, two sets of sides, and we have a set of angles. However, this angle is not in between. It has to be the in-between angle. So C would have to be congruent with R to make this work. So we are given RE is congruent to CA. We're also given that RD is congruent to CT. We're also given that angle R is congruent to angle T. And that's the problem. So R would need to be to C in order to use side angle side. We have T instead. So this does not work. We cannot do it by side angle side. All right. And that is it. That is it for this lesson. So um, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, until next time, we'll talk to you later.